Today we're in LA hanging out with my sis-in-law and we went to LACMA and tomorrow we're going to Fame Expo. So we've just been out and about in LA. We're probably gonna go get dinner, then check in and do some more running around. Fruity Pebbles. Thank you. I get so many compliments on it because it's white though. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, your camera's so pretty. I've never seen a camera like that. Well, bitch, look into this Best Buy. You'll see a lot like this. <laughs> white camera, Google. I know. Siri, <laughs> search white cameras. Searching. I have a case like my like yours too, the white one, but it's lime green. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying that. But I that. forgot why I took it off. Because the tripod doesn't screw oh, on properly. Yeah. I was like, fucking shit. And I use it a lot often, so I was like, nah. Yeah. Oh, and then I bought a leather leather case that just kind of oh, covers yeah. the bottom part. The same shit. It doesn't. I, I hate can't. that. Oh, my God. Are you fucking serious? Oh, they mm -hmm. Take a slight right no, turn towards CA 110 yeah, North and Harbor Freeway North. I have it in shootings. Right to merge onto CA 110 huh? North. I have it in shootings. In shootings? Yeah, because those are really like the... Like if you drop it, it's done. You have to get a new one. With the camera? Yeah. Like the lens is very, very sensitive. I dropped it like not even hard at Disneyland, and it wasn't reading the lens anymore. Dang. Like, stay here. Keep right to merge on to CA 110 North. And that shit was done. It just give it. It just. Dang. Give it. Friday five, five o'clock traffic. Yeah. Fuck. That LA life. Fuck that. I'm going, going back, back to Temecula. <laughs> In 7.7 .7 miles, take exit 31 B onto Fair Oaks Avenue. Bye, LA. Bye, LA. Fame, here we come. Back to the Pasadena. Yeah. Old town. We didn't see no shimma today, sad days. I know. Like the museum was closed. Yeah, all kinds of food, dude. I know. I try to play it off low key. Oh yeah, I'm a student, I forgot my ID. I thought the guy was gonna let me slide. No, log into your account, like, fuck. <laughs> oh shit. I was like, nah, that's too much effort. Okay. I don't remember my password. <laughs> you see what happened was, I graduated in 2010. <laughs> no, seriously, like I carry that shit everywhere because a lot of people give discounts and it doesn't have a year on it. Yeah. So I always use it. I think I have it on my old order. I get Especially because I'm always using coupons for everything. So I'm like, why the fuck do I not carry my damn college ID? Yeah, I know you should start carrying it. 
bubble mask how cool it's like bubbling up can you guys see it I could feel it tingling in my face so hopefully this helps how cool I mats I did a simple I didn't do eyeshadow today just a bow lip and my lashes. Hog life. <laughs> <laughs> We are out here for Fame Expo. We ran a little bit late this time. It we, was my fault. <laughs> we had to get some Sleeping totally Beauty. No, fault. but we didn't even get up earlier. I mean, as early as we did last time. That's true. We're like, eh. Oh yeah. more chill this time we weren't like oh let's get up super early so we'll see how it goes today so we're gonna go stand in line it opens at 10 but it's like oh I think it's after like 9 30 so hopefully the line's not too bad we don't even have a plan of where we're gonna go but we're gonna go to Morphe first so We'll check that out and then hopefully we can say hi to my friend Dion because she's working at the LA girl booth so we'll go say hi and check out their stuff. Um, yesterday we were just out and about in LA so it was fun. Oh look Pug! <laughs> Pug life. <laughs> He's so cute. He looks he like came Bam. Right at me. Did you see that? Yeah. He came right at me. I was like, ooh. He knows I'm about that pug life. Yeah. I'm like pug life. We have over a hundred or a million subscribers, and then 2014 and 15, we made uh, Inc's 5,000 list for top fastest growing company in America. So that was a huge deal for us. We had lots of growth, and then we're at today, 2016. Um, five years later, we're at 22 million. So, um, which is completely a huge thank you to all of you guys. I would not be here. I try not to get emotional every time I get on stage, and I give myself a pep talk. I'm like. Don't do it, Marlena. Don't get emotional. But every time I think of all the support, I really appreciate you guys. If it wasn't for you, 
I wouldn't even be here. So thank you so much. <laughs> Girl, we have not spent a dime in marketing at all. And a lot of major corporations, they've had these huge marketing budgets, and they're putting ads in magazines, and they're doing TV commercials. We kept it simple. We did not spend a dime <laughs> on marketing, but we did invest in social media. So if you are starting your own business, you do not have to have this massive budget. You do not have to sell your kidney and your children to start a business <laughs> or your house. Keep that all in check. Um, but you can build social media. So, how to stand out in the cosmetic industry? Are there any of you interested in actually starting a cosmetic business? Quite a few. So, one thing that has made us stand out is by being visible. That's with social media. And if you are overwhelmed, pick one platform. So, most of you in here said you love Instagram. Great. Cosmetic is is very artistic. Post your favorite looks on yourself. Get some models in. Do their makeup. Get some beautiful shots. If you're selling um, lipsticks, get some great shots of the lipsticks with a pretty background and sparkly lights and just take some amazing, beautiful shots, post them to Instagram. And it will take some time to get going. Be patient with it as well. Um, and also to provide a variety of products. So for us, the big thing was our eyeshadows was our number one and we did sell 10. I slapped down 50 when we first started. And now we have, I think, how many is it, 120? Yeah, about 120 colors. <laughs> you do not have to start with that many, but provide lots of variety. And then the number one thing, has anyone got any notes from the Makeup Geek team, personalized notes? Has anyone? Yes. <laughs> My team is amazing, you guys. So one thing to stand out is to have that personal touch. If you're comfortable being on camera, get on camera, talk to your customers, talk to your fans, handwrite them notes, especially in the beginning, send a little note, thank you so much for your order, I appreciate you, and they remember that, and I have so many of my customers come up, I still have that note from you saying thank you, or you know, one of your staff members wrote me this really sweet note, and they remember that, and that personal connection makes it more than just having this big corporation. It feels like you're supporting your best friend. And that's kind of the goal that we've used to stand out. Uh, the other ones I'll kind of blow through safety first. Obviously, we're very big into safety and clean ingredient decks. We try to make everything for sensitive skin. We're very kind to animals. I love me some animals. So we don't, we don't test on rabbits. I don't test on my dog lady. They're all safe. <laughs> um, and then also the last one is keeping up with trends. So... I don't know about you guys, you feel like the trends with all the social media and everything is just out of control. I like, wait, I just got used to Instagram and now there's Snapchat and there's all this other stuff, so keep up with the trends the best you can, but focus on one social media to start and then from there build. Next one is social media. So this is just our numbers for social, doesn't really mean anything, but I want to show you guys how to take your social media once you start building it and start your brand. So for example, I wanted to start cosmetics. I drove my butt all over the US and Canada going to different labs. So what I did is I did a Google search and I typed cosmetic labs in the United States and I got a whole list of ones that I could find. I called them up, I was up their behinds. I was like, please call me back. I really want to start a makeup line. I saved all this money for my YouTube earnings. Please let me know if you'll work with me. Some of them denied me. My favorite story is when I went to Toronto. I will not say the lab because I don't like bashing. And they didn't contact me. And I was persistent. You guys know me. I am persistent. I called. I emailed. And finally no one answered. So my mom and I got in the car from Michigan, drove six hours to Toronto, and I showed up on the doorstep. And I came to the front desk, and I was like... Um, excuse me, I'm Marlena Stahl. I've been calling you guys for the last three months. I've been emailing. I just drove from Detroit, Michigan. I really want to start a makeup line. Can you please help me? And the receptionist was like, I'm sorry, no one has time for today. I was like, it's okay, I'll wait. So my mom and I sit back here, and we wait. And we wait some more. Three hours later, I went up and said, can I please just talk to someone? I just want to start a cosmetic line. And they totally blew me off. So mom and I had a road trip back down to Detroit. But I did not give up. I called other labs. Same thing. And I finally reached a couple that wanted to work with me. 
So I started with eyeshadows and we went back and forth and I did custom formulations and I just started with one product and then grew it from there. Um, so building a business, I'm not going to say is easy. It takes a lot of persistence and you just got to be a honey badger and if people don't work with you, just keep on going because eventually they'll listen and they'll give you what you want. You just have to be really persistent. Um, another thing with building your brand is... Um, just do research with your vendors. So the process is, is you have your product and you have your packaging and then you also have your boxes. So pretend this is my um, lipstick. So I have a lab that formulates the lipstick. I have another company that does the components and then I have another company that does boxes and then another one that does labels. <laughs> so it is a process. Because most people starting out, it takes some investment to get it going, you could do private label. Do a lot of you guys know some about private labeling? It's a great way, it's what a lot of spas do. You know how you go get your facial and you're like, wow, I didn't know like aesthetic arts had their own line. They do private labeling to get themselves started until you could save up financially and do something custom from your own. And generally, you'll want to have a good audience. That's why I'm saying social media is important because if you have a large following, you can do custom formulations where they're asking you to put up 5,000 per order. So if you're doing body butters, they request that you do 5,000 minimum for that one body butter. But if you start private labeling, you save that money and then you can do custom formulations. So that's kind of, is that the really long version? Okay. I want to see if you guys have questions, because I'm sure there's a lot, and I'll try to do my best in answering how to start your business. It could be anything, makeup, jewelry, whatever. Do we have another microphone we can pass around? I'm just curious as to if you got a reason why you were denied in working with those companies, and you ever find out why. They weren't taking me seriously because they didn't know who I was, and it was a really big lab, and they work with large companies, which I don't want to say what companies they were working with, but I think they thought, oh, here's the girl that has a YouTube channel, she wants to start a makeup line. They didn't know how serious I was, so they kind of blew me off not knowing that I was like, no, I saved up my coins, I'm starting this, so let's talk. <laughs> so I think it was just they didn't think I was getting taken seriously. But some labs are more, um, the smaller labs I find are more comfortable working with someone starting out versus the big labs. So just honestly do a Google search, call around to all the different ones and find one that will talk to you. They can send you samples. You'll know when you get on the phone with them if they'll be seriously willing to work with you or not. One here, and then we'll come over. <laughs> Hi, Martin. Hi. Uh, I just well, wanted to ask you if you have any tips for, um, like, when you reach those ruts and when you have those those times when you're not moving or you're not growing, how do you pick yourself back up and, and keep that motivation and keep going? It's hard sometimes. I'm not going to lie. There's been times where we've plateaued or, you know, my numbers stalled a bit because social media can be very fickle, and even the cosmetic industry can. I try to always think outside the box and bring something different to the table. So for example, you know, we did the eyeshadow thing and I'm like, okay, well let's try something different. Let's put some curated palettes or let's do a collaboration or do lip products. So I try to always just take a breath and think, okay, what can I do differently that's fresh and unique and interesting and that speaks to me personally? Because it has to be something you're passionate about too. If you feel like you're stuck in a rut, then just step back and say, okay, what personally would make me happy? what would be something I would love to create or do differently that would be fulfilling and it generally comes across to your audience too. So it's honestly just thinking outside the box and just trying to think, okay, something different that I've never done before. It will totally shock everyone. They'll be so surprised, but then they'll be really intrigued so your numbers will start to grit to go back up. <laughs> We're leaving fame, sad day, but I didn't do too bad. I didn't really have anything in mind that I wanted to get. So I just got a couple of stuff, but it was fun. This time we didn't we didn't come as I usually come super early, but this time we got here a little right when it opened, and I really like how it was organized. We're able to get in fast, and 
they checked in your ID and then you would go stand in line so we got in and we were able to go to all the booths it wasn't crazy packed and we left a little bit early the only one that did get really crazy was Morphe but it was worth the wait uh, my sister-in-law got the gold brushes that she wanted and it was overall fun so now we're gonna go browse around in Pasadena and go get something because we're starving Ooh, looks like there's some event going down over there, so we might get some food. Overall, this weekend was fun because we're just out and about. We really didn't have anything planned. We're just kind of like, let's do whatever. So yesterday was Friday, and we were out in LA, so we ended up going to LACMA. We went to two ice cream places that were so much fun. Um, one of them I wanted to go because um, it was uh, the cone of the ice cream was a fish and yep of course mermaid life and then i tried a matcha ice cream and then i didn't even know i was already excited to try it and now i was even more excited that i had a filling and it was so good i got a nutella filling it was the bomb.com now we're gonna go out and about and see where we go eat because i'm starving whoosh popping mm. oh, that wrap caught you off guard. <laughs> Spicy. Hey, pero que, aren't you Mexican? <laughs> what happened, bro? <laughs> you can do it. I know I can do it. I'm Mexican. You're Mexican. I like the size of this because it's not like. Oh, that's pretty. It's pretty good. I like how they cut my lettuce. Oh, it has potato chips. And the whole sauce bomb. Avocado is nice. I can't believe you don't like it. I can't believe you don't like it. Mm-mm-mm-mm. 